Neil Entwistle was born on September 18, 1978. He was born in Nottinghamshire, England. He attended the University of York in England and received a master's degree in electric engineering. He grew up in workshop with his parents and a younger brother in a working class home. Rachel Elizabeth Souza was born on December 14, 1978. She was born in Wymouth, Massachusetts. Rachel was also attending college abroad at York University. She received a degree in teaching. While attending York University together, the two met and began a relationship. They married on August 23, 2003 in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The couple moved to Warshire, England, where their first child was born. Lillian Rose Souza was born on April 9, 2005. Neil worked in the computing business, and Rachel worked as a teacher of English, drama, and theater at St. Augustine's Catholic Church in Redditch. The couple soon moved back to the United States. They found a home in Hopkinton, which is located approximately 26 miles from Boston, Massachusetts. After being unable to reach Rachel, a friend had called the police to report her missing. Police arrived at the Entwistle's home. They knocked and no one answered. They did a perimeter search of the home, but failed to notice Rachel and Lillian's bodies as they had been hidden under bedding in the master bedroom. A second and more thorough search on the evening of January 22nd was when the police discovered their bodies. The bodies of 27-year-old Rachel and 9-month-old Lillian were found on January 22nd, 2006 in the master bedroom of the family's rented home. They had been living there for only 10 days. The autopsy report showed that Rachel had died from a gunshot wound to the head and baby Lillian had died from a gunshot wound to the stomach. The bullet that had went through Lillian's stomach had also passed through Rachel's left breast. The bullets were so small that they had been missed until the autopsy. Police were shocked at the discovery, as this was considered a very safe town, and crimes like this rarely happened. Only hours after the death of his wife and infant daughter, Neil purchased a one-way plane ticket to London at about 5 a.m. on January 21st. The flight was on British Airways. It left Boston at 8.15 a.m. His quick departure was not the only reason he raised suspicion with the police. On January 23rd, a Massachusetts State Police Officer called Neil at his parents' home in Worksop, UK. The call lasted two hours and was recorded. Neil told the officer that on the morning of the murders, he had left their home around 9 a.m. to run errands and that his wife and daughter were alive and well when he left, laying in the master bedroom. He stated that he returned home around 11 a.m. and found that they had been shot and killed. He said he covered the bodies with a blanket and did not tell the authorities. Neil claimed that he was so upset by finding his family murdered that he decided to kill himself. He drove to his in-law's home to get the 22 LR caliber rifle. Finding the home locked, he then decided to fly home to England to see his parents. Police immediately named Neil a person of interest in the murders. When asked about the gun, Neil said that the gun belonged to his father-in-law, Joseph Matizero. He stated that he had only used the gun once, months earlier, while practicing at Matizero's shooting club. A search of Neil's computer showed that just days before the murders occurred, he had looked up a website that described how to kill people and searched for escort services. Neil had been unemployed since September 2005 and was drowning in debt. He claimed to receive $10,000 a month from an offshore account set up by a previous employer in the UK. Research proved that to be a lie. 
he had more than $30,000 in credit card debt and was being investigated for several fraudulent transactions. Authorities began to suspect financial motivation for the murders. Soon after speaking to Neil, the police issued an international arrest warrant. On February 9th of 2006, Neil was arrested at a London underground train at Royal Oak Station following a search of his parents' home. Neil requested to not be sent back to the United States, but later agreed to be extradited. Middlesex County District Attorney Martha Coakley made a press conference after Neil's arrest. On Thursday night, January 19th, 2006, Rachel was alive and had spoken to family members. At some time Friday morning, Neil Entwistle, with a firearm, we believe that he had secured at some time before the murder, shot Rachel in the head, then proceeded to shoot baby Lillian, who was lying next to her mother in bed. We believe that this was intended to be a murder-suicide, but we cannot confirm that. What we believe happened next is that Neil Entwistle returned the gun to his father-in-law's home, then made preparations to leave the country. He purchased a one-way ticket to the United Kingdoms the day of January 22, 2006. Based on forensic information late on Tuesday that linked Neil Entwistle to the 22 caliber handgun, it was owned by Rachel's father, Joseph Matizaro. Rachel and Lillian were buried with their surname, Sousa on their graves. They were buried together in a single coffin. Lillian's birth and death certificates were edited to read Father Unknown. They were buried a week before Neil's arrest. After being extradited to the U.S. on February 15th, he was arraigned at a Massachusetts court in order to be held without bail until a trial was set. On March 28th, Neil was indicted on two counts of murder the illegal possession of a firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition. He pled not guilty to all charges. In December 2006, nearly an entire year after the murders, letters were found in his cell where he was speaking on depression and having suicidal thoughts. He was transferred to a state hospital and had a mental health evaluation and was then returned to jail. A forensic psychiatrist and a doctor believed Neil had Asperger's syndrome. After many delays, the Middlesex Superior Court began jury selection in June of 2008. Neil's trial began on June 2nd of 2008. Neil called no witnesses in his trial, nor did he testify on his own behalf. He was found guilty on all charges on June 25, 2008. He was sentenced to life in prison for the murders with no parole, plus 10 years of probation for the illegal possession of the firearm and ammunition, with the conditions that he never speak for profit on his story. Neil was sent to Sousa Correctional Center, where he was put into protective custody after threats of death from a white supremacist gang. In December, he was transferred to Old Colony Correction Center, which was a medium security prison. Neil's conviction was appealed to the Massachusetts Supreme Court. The appeal was rejected in August of 2012. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear his case in January of 2013. He has to date exhausted all of his appeal options. In 2008, when Neil was going through trial, his parents filed a complaint of harassment against the UK Press Complaints Commission against their local newspapers. The complaints were rejected. His parents had insisted that they were being harassed constantly and nonstop by multiple newspapers. To this day, they insist on their son's innocence in the murders of his wife and infant daughter. They have stated that Rachel was the true killer 
and Neil will eventually be cleared and released from prison. Neil's mother said after the trial that the evidence points directly to Rachel murdering our granddaughter, then committing suicide. Prosecutors, on the other hand, believe Neil killed them out of a fit of rage over his failure to find work and the accumulation of debt he had collected. Neil has never admitted to the murders of his wife and infant daughter. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you have any case ideas that you would like us to cover, make sure and send us an email to themodsquad2021 at gmail.com.